There's probably bands that when they start, they expect to, to, to be successful. Personally, I've always known I was gonna do it my whole life, no matter what. I had no problem doing it being broke, you know what I mean? You know, you have to enjoy what you're doing. You go to a town, and you play, and you meet some people, and six months later, you go back, and hopefully there's more there the next time. Kind of hope to make enough money to put in the gas tank for the next day, and maybe eat. <laughs> well, I could never pretend that I don't know. You can never pretend that I'm your man. That's exactly the way that I want. It's exactly the way that I am. And you call me in the morning with your truck. You're taking it downtown every night. I could never face the stars at night above. Got my hands on the ground and you know I'm right. You wait so long. You wait so long. Really, our time of, of playing in front of like 10 people is just recently over. Whether it's three people or, you know, 1,500 people or whatever, it's, it's out of respect for your crowd, you put on a good show no matter what. Virtually everybody you see out there when you're on stage saved up their money to go to that show and could be doing something else. But, you know, it's important that you come out and make sure that they're happy they did it. As a politician, nothing happens in this booth downtown anymore. You went so long. You went so long. You went so long. You went so long. It's just fun now, like, like, you know, we just got to play on David Letterman. That was a gas. We're going to play at a Twins game this summer. And it's just like the, these little things that happen are, are really a bonus on something we already love to do. We have always played well together. We have never been the most technically proficient band in the world, but we would love to play together. And what we do together is kind of where, why we like it so much, you know? I just love music and recorded music. I'm fascinated by it. My free time on tour, um, in a lot of towns I end up at a record store. This tours through vinyl. I've, vinyl's become a little bit of an obsession for me. But it, because some stupid band is playing in here today, they had to like bunch up all these things. And I just like the package, you know, it's like this big 12 by 12 canvas of artwork and this big record that you put on and, and uh, you know, it, it physically makes music on, in your stereo. Um, so it's just kind of a romantic notion, maybe. It, you know, it's easier to put the iPod on, for sure, which I do. It's like mystery bags. At home, man, I like the warmth of, of vinyl. Nice. Especially vinyl recorded at a time when all of it was recorded analog anyway. I don't think I really knew I wanted to go this direction when we started. It was, you know, it was just something for fun, just something different to do. Um, every, almost every band I've been in, I've had another band that plays once in a while, just that's not like the first band at all. And so just to get some different people to play with and, and do something else and just another creative outlet. That's how this band started. Um, and so what was different for me at the time was acoustic instruments. Happy And I started playing together, duo shows. Um, I was playing guitar, he was playing mandolin, and we were playing in other bands at the time, um, so we just did it whenever we could. 
he opened for my band's last Duluth show, and I invited myself to play mandolin with him for a few songs. Yeah. <laughs> I said, do you know how to play the mandolin? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know how to play the mandolin. he was a bass player in his other band. <laughs> When my other band had their last show, um, we, we, were, we were done playing. It was a place we played all the time. Throughout the melee of loading out, uh, somebody walked off with my amp and my electric guitar, and it was just gone. So, and and I, you know, at the time, I was sleeping on couches and didn't have any money to buy a new electric guitar or anything. I just, was just left with my acoustic, that old Yamaha acoustic guitar. And um, so we started playing more then. <laughs> One, two, three. We had a mandolin and a guitar and tried yeah, something we were also in that playing vein. A lot of Irish music. Mm -hmm. Like I'd bring like these Irish songbooks and like we'd go through that. We were just trying to learn. I think it was like how do you play how do you play you know acoustic music without drums? And pretty soon you're gonna be at bluegrass music, you know. <laughs> and all the cheap thrill. Watching these guys play a, a mandolin guitar set I was kind of playing along with them in my head, kind of the parts that I'd play on the banjo. I went up and asked them um, if they wanted to play with the banjo player, and they, you know, they're like, yeah, sure. And you know, they pull, both pulled out their day planners and like <laughs> figured out a date that we could get together. And I, I remember going home and calling my sister and, and saying, like, I think I, I think I'm going to be playing with uh, some guys up in uh, Duluth, and I was really excited about it. it don't help you. Everyone else has, you know, been in lots of different bands, punk bands, rock bands. I had never been in a band, so I was pretty fortunate to, to stumble into this. We all get older and older still, but morning's peaceful. I was in a jam band and. Like there were a lot of like 10 minute instrumental things that, you know, it was, was cool at first, but after a while, I was looking for something a little more simple. I met Dave Simonette while well, we were both playing in bands in Duluth, and he was playing with, with these two guys and just sort of invited me over. And then it worked out that he could play like 12 or 15 gigs in a row. After yeah. that, it was like, man, I don't want to play without him anymore. I saw Ryan's band. I was at that show that I opened for your other band, for Pertinent, at the 400 bar. And then I saw, I had never seen those guys play before, and I saw, the second I saw Ryan play fiddle, I was like, wow, that's, I want that sound in our band, you know? I've seen a lot of fiddle players um, before that, and I never at any point was like, I gotta have that, you know? But when, when I saw what Ryan did, it was—it just was different. To me, it was different than anybody I'd ever seen. We just loved playing with the guy right away. It was like when Timmy started playing with us, when Ryan would play with us, and then he would not play with us, and we'd go on the road. We really missed it, so we were able to con him into joining eventually. <laughs> just a fiddle player. I played guitar in bands, I played drums, I played bass, I played fiddle. I didn't study the fiddle really, or fiddle players, so I don't necessarily sound like them. So I think people are like, wow, that sounds different. I've never heard a fiddle do that before. I think of it as the snare drum. You know, it's, it, it's what a snare drum would do if, if we had a snare drum, playing the backbeat. So if you, if you just push too hard and hit it too hard, <laughs> it goes and you just go like a snare drum would do.
we just found it kind of on the first try with these guys. Nobody has left the band. We haven't had to replace anybody. So, um, yeah, very lucky. It's a really hard thing. I mean, I've been in, you know, in other projects where it's almost hard to play. You know, because it's, it's, it's almost, I don't know even how you describe it, the chemistry in between players. It's an unspoken thing. It's just, you, you feel it or you don't. We only had a small amount of time to, rec we wanted to record. For us, we record most of the stuff live. There's not a lot of editing and not a lot of overdubbing. But there's not really a, a wealth of recording studios on the north shore of Lake Superior. The place we ended up recording at, it's, it's called Solia Pines. And it's this vacation rental home. It's just a, it's a log home and on like 10 acres of woods. We went up and, and worked for three days and just everybody slept there. And I think maybe some people went home to Duluth or whatever, but it was, we were there like the whole time for those three days. And then we had to take apart the whole studio because somebody had rented the place out for the weekend. And then we had to come back up like the following Monday and we were there for a couple more days. It was like 10 minute drive from, from where most of our friends lived. So at, you know, we were done at night, everybody would come out and, and we'd listen to music and play them some of the recordings. And, and that actually turned into people sitting in on the record, which is kind of cool. Um, the female vocalists that are on Alone, we just happened to be out there with some other friends. And we knew, I mean, we knew them, they're singers, right? they, all of them sing anyway. So um, yeah, I was like, hey, you wanna, why don't you sing a part? And, and the last song, the calm and the crying wind, the, the choruses, there's like everybody that was there. It was our friends, the guys that were filming, everybody in the room, we just stood around, stood around a big, a couple microphones and sang the chorus, you know? So that turned into a, a lot of fun. We were approached by a major record label. The thinking about going with the label was if we really feel like they can increase how many people get our music, if they can increase you know, record sales or just exposure to our music by a, a really large amount, then it might be worth it, you know? Because um, a record label takes, you know, they take a huge chunk of every record, you know, 80% of every record or something like that goes away. We kept putting off signing the label until we were done with the record and had given it to them. Because didn't, we didn't want to sign the contract and then be bound to release this record with them legally and have them not like it. You know, because then we either it doesn't get put out or we, you know, who knows? I guess that's the only other option because we weren't going to change it no matter what. You know, we made the record we wanted to make. On the day we were going to sign the contract, I got a call from our manager saying that one of the people in the business office of the record label doesn't like the record and would you be willing to change it or add a song? You know, that was the end of that. You know what, we can, now we can do whatever we want with it. It's ours. If it's successful, we own it. If it's not, we own it. It doesn't matter. We really made the decision, I think, at that point to stop looking and just as long as it still makes sense for us to do it, we'll stay independent. And it's been a really fun way to do it. We're musicians and we'd like to play. You know, everybody had set the goal for themselves that this is what we wanted to do for our living, not having to spend our days doing something else. So in order to do that, um, especially a band like us without a record label, it, we have to go play. You know, you go to a town, and you play and you meet some people and six months later you go back and hopefully there's more there the next time. You don't make any money at first. You can't survive off it, but you have to put the time in to, to be able to do it later.
we're going uh, hat shopping for me. I need to get a new uh, straw western hat for the stage in the summer. My previous one I wore when I did chores at home as well as on stage, and it is gross. I've promised my wife I won't wear it off the property anymore. Yeah, you know, in northern Minnesota, there really isn't places to get cowboy hats, so I take advantage of tour to find a place that does, and we're in Colorado, so we're going to Shepler's. Will I see you? Will I see you? Will I see you again? You know, you go out on the road, it is a little bit of a fantasy world out there because, like, you're just playing music and having fun and meeting people who, like, are excited to meet you. And, like, you know, you, to go home and, like, have kids that are, like, you know, no matter what time I get home, they're waking up at 6.30 or 7, you know? And then as soon as they're up, I got to wake up and then get myself outside and, like, start doing chores. I mean, like, there's stuff that just has to happen, and it keeps you grounded. You know, it totally keeps you grounded, and that's good. We were lucky enough to start at a time when the, none of us had kids, and none of us had, um, you know, none of us owned a house, and no, nobody had really much other responsibility besides the band. I've been married for six years, almost. It's always hard to be away from my wife, Annie, but a kid is a whole other dimension, and, and they're just such a part of you that even leaving for, you know, like on this trip, like two weeks or something like that, it's, it's tough. For people that don't have kids, I, I just think that it probably doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm a father of two, and I have a five-year-old and an eight-month-old. But you hear so many stories about, you know, musicians who, who are fathers, and their kids kind of resent the music because their dad was never around and I try really hard to like make sure that I am around and I'm not going to be a, a man who's resented by my kids when I get older for, um, for doing what I do but I mean that's really up to up to them and time you know Will I see you again? now when I'm on tour I'm gone, you know, like my wife's at home with, you know, a five-year-old and an eight-month-old, and I'm sure if you asked her, she would say it's hard. But I don't, I don't like to say that for me because, I mean, if it was really that hard, I could work a job at home where I came home every day. And I would probably not be as happy as I am right now. And that would be hard. When my wife and I had our daughter, the first time I left, I remember getting um, to the van and saying to Eric, like, oh, I get it now, you know, like, I understand why this is so tough for you now and why, why you have to really, you know, you have to make time for that. It's a very important thing. Like, you have to make sure that we have time off and to be able to spend with your family. We go out for a couple weeks and then we'll be home for a few weeks and then go out and come back. We don't really go out for like six months at a time like some bands do because everybody needs to be home. You know, when we first got started, one of the bigger bands in Minnesota when we first got started was a band called The Big Woo. And um, the big news was that their lead guitar player left because because of a variety of issues, but one of them was him just being on the road often enough that you know he missed his kids and his kids missed him, and he couldn't justify it to himself anymore. And when you know when I found out I was going to be a father, I kind of told myself that, that like I, I I would like to have the same courage that that guy had that to like just quit, you know, like when you got to do the right thing for your family, that that's what you'll do. And I think it kind of helps to make the focus on the music a stronger focus because, you know, if you're going to be out there doing it, it's got to be worth it, you know, and there's a lot of reasons that it is worth it, and that includes it being ultimately stronger for your home life and for your family life. The future of the band, um, I have no idea. If you're going to devote so much of your life to a band, you know, if you're gonna leave your family and pile into a vehicle with these guys all day, it has to make sense. 
I just know that when we started playing, I didn't have a place to live. I was sleeping on couches and, and having like the best time of my life doing it because I could play music all the time. Come into the world alone. Whatever all this is right now, for some people, this is a great success. And for other people, you know, this would be considered not that great. You go out of the world. This comes and goes. I've seen it with a lot of bands. Your people love you for a while and then they don't. Whatever little success we have now, I'm enjoying it. As long as we make the music we want to make and I write the songs I want to write, then then it's you know successful beyond words. I think. And you have to still be excited to do it. Creatively, you know, mutual respect with everybody. We'll do it as long as those things you know fit together. And I I foresee it being a long time. You know what I mean. We just want to keep going as long as we can. Oh.